What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the special afternoon edition of TSR Live, um, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. We are brought to you in part by my new player course, How to Master the Game. You guys can get that at donovansharp.com slash how to master the game. 25 hours of rock solid game knowledge and experience. Uh, this again, this is anic this is anecdotal stuff. As I turn myself down here, this is anecdotal stuff. Everything that's in this course, 25 hours worth of game knowledge. This is based on personal experience. This isn't something that I heard from somebody else. Uh, these are all things based on what I've done, what I've seen, and what I do. Uh, so be sure to go and check that out. That's donovansharp.com slash how to master the game. All right, let's get right to it. My special guest this evening is none other than. Then the fittest man I know, my man, Mr. Myron Gaines, who I had the pleasure of meeting down in Orlando last weekend. Um, we are going to talk about muscular hypertrophy. Oh, wait, hypertrophy. I'm not a fitness expert. Uh, first of all, Myron, how are you doing today, man? Chilling, man. How are you, dude? Dude, I'm doing real good. Uh, listen, thanks for joining us today. Um, I've already thanks looked. Thanks for having me on. And look, guys, this is top notch information. There are guys on the internet, there are guys everywhere that charge hundreds of dollars an hour to give you the kind of information that you are going to get on this. Uh, and here's the thing, Myron. I believe that the last podcast that we did on uh, on body fat, I believe that that's going to be like a that, that's going to be a staple podcast. That's going to be a destination podcast. And I'm hoping the next Thank few you. we do. Yeah, it's oh, honor to hear. That, listen, hopefully the next few that we can do will be sort of the foundation. Hey, if you want to know about fitness, Go check out go check out Myron Gaines podcast that he did with Donovan Sharp. That's where you should start. Absolutely, man. That's the goal, man. Putting the information out there for the guys and you know, giving you guys what really works, man. Unplugging you from the matrix of the bullshit of the fitness industry. You know, the matrix where they're trying to sell fit tees and waist trainers okay. and all this other stuff that doesn't really work. You know, it's about giving practical, evidence-based uh training and nutrition info for you guys to apply to your lives and really get the results, man. Without the use of drugs, without the use of spending crazy money, without the use of frustration at the gym or paying trainers that don't know what they're talking about. That's what it's about, getting the truth out there. Excellent, excellent. So so you decided to, um, you actually uh, pitched this idea to me. Muscular hypertrophy, what was it what was it that gave you the inspiration for this? Now, obviously muscular hypertrophy is muscle growth. Why did you decide to do this particular topic today? What was it that said, hey, you know what? This is what we need to be doing this particular podcast on. Yeah, man. It's just there's just so much misinformation out there. Uh, and, and I guess one of the gifts and the curses of the Internet age, the information age, as I call it, is that there's like an abundance of information out there. You can get it for free and, you know, you, it's and it's instant, right? Like you can literally be on your phone in the bathroom and get this information instantly, right? But the problem is that with all that information coming in quickly, there's also a lot of bad information out there, misinformation. And right. I think people don't have the, fun, the fundamentals down when it comes to uh, what really matters when it comes to, uh, comes to building muscle, uh, creating an aesthetic physique, losing body fat, max, basically maximizing uh, body composition, which maximizing body composition is basically increasing your lean body mass to your fat mass. That's really what it comes down to, right? And uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I was like, man, I got to put this presentation together, get some scientifically backed sources, which are in the reference box for anybody that wants to know. I, we, Me and Donovan worked really hard to break it down for you guys for like frequency, tempo, all the things that we're going to talk about in this presentation. But um, yeah, we're just going to basically distill hundreds of pages of research for you guys in one presentation to give you guys what really works, what doesn't, what's important, what's not, so that you can walk away from this presentation and know, okay, you know, it doesn't really matter if I'm like, wait, you know, taking seven second rests in between my bicep curls, you know what I mean? Right. Seven second, like eccentrics. So that's what it's about getting you guys the right information. And that's what made me prompted me to do this presentation. Excellent. Excellent. Well said. Um, and again, guys, uh, this is Myron Gaines, uh, who we are talking to, uh, Myron, I'm actually going to, I think you and I discussed this. You're going to be a regular, um, you're going to be a regular. We're, we're going to try to do these every two weeks. And, mm. um, and, and so, and, and, you know, one thing that you, that men have to do is we're not like, I'm not a know-it-all. I don't really know much about too many things. I know, I know women and I know how to save money, but I'm not a financial expert. This is why I have guys like Aaron Clary. Well, I've lost over a hundred pounds, but I'm not a fitness expert. 
And at the 21 convention, my my speech was about the three pillars of masculinity. Um, this is body, mind, and finance as well. I'm the mind guy. I'm the guy that can help to get your mind right. I'm the guy that can help you to strengthen your to, 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 to help increase your mental strength. Strengthening your finances, that's going to be my guy, Aaron Clary. Obviously, strengthening your body is going to be my guy, Myron Gaines. So we're going to we're gonna do – Thank the- you. It's an honor, man. Listen, man. App- Appreciate listen, that. Keep you up close and personal. The guy – dude, like you are so much taller than I – I mean, I knew you were like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, but when I saw you, I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Like you're the I always undersell it. I yeah, undersell I'm like, it. Yo, <laughs> like under promise over. I was like, I'm going to show this Donovan. Fuck yeah, I'm 6'1". <laughs> I'm fucking giant. Um, okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started um, with the uh, with the presentation. We're going to take questions at the end. Um, if you guys have any questions, put them in the chat. We'll get to them. We'll get to them at the end. If you have other questions, you want to call in, you want to you want to talk, get on the show. 914-205-5356. The phone lines are open now. If we can find a breaking point or a stopping point during this podcast where we can take a phone call that has something to do with what we're talking about at the time, if it's relevant, we'll take the phone call. If not, you'll just have to wait until the end. Uh, The presentation is going to be about 10, 15 minutes, maybe 15 to 20, just depending upon what the the questions that we get. uh, And we'll see. uh, We'll see what happens. So um, so let's go ahead and get started here, man. Um, First of all, we're going to show first of all, we're going to show off. Right. (laughs) <laughs> who you are and why you should listen, right? Now, I can go all into, well, Myron certified at this. And, no, 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 no. Listen, man, it doesn't matter what kind of certifications a person has, right? I don't give a shit what their certifications are. If a dude looks like that, he knows a shit. End of discussion. I don't think there's any really anything else that we need to say about that. So let's go to the first uh, slide here. Take my audience. And again, this is going to be muscular hypertrophy. And I hope I'm saying that right. 101. This is building muscle for dummies. Take it away. Yeah. All right, man. So uh, thank you, Donovan, for giving me the floor. Guys, hopefully by the end of this presentation, you guys are going to know from A to Z what muscular hypertrophy is, which is basically a fancy way of saying muscle growth and uh, improving your body composition. So let's get into it, right? So what is the hell is hypertrophy? Um, basically, it's the enlargement of an organ or tissue from the increase in size of its cells. In English, it basically means increasing your muscle size, guys. Um, we're going to go over the critical elements needed for hypertrophy in the next slide. Okay. Oops, wait a minute. There we go. All right. All right. So um, this pyramid on the on the left here, this was adopted from Dr. Eric Helms, uh, great coach, scientist, uh, great work. Uh, if you guys really want to know the truth when it comes to building muscle or burning fat and everything like that, check out his material. Great stuff. I like this pyramid because it perfectly illustrates uh, in order of importance, what matters when it comes to building muscle. So as you guys saw the fat loss presentation, you know, we talked about adherence, um, calorie, calories in, calories out, macronutrient breakdown. Now uh, for training, it's kind of the same, you know, but obviously there's different elements when it comes to training as far as like what matters to build muscle. Okay. So the order of importance, guys, is adherence, volume, intensity, and frequency, progression, exercise selection, rest tempo, Uh, excuse me, rest period, and then tempo in order of importance. So we're going to break down each of these elements in this pyramid. And I also 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 uh, did a section on reps for you guys, which I'm going to talk about, which I wish was kind of like annotated in this pyramid. But other than that, this pyramid is like perfect when it comes to like what matters for building muscle. So let's go to number one, adherence on the next slide. Myron is educated because he just dropped annotated on us. So we know (laughs) he just dropped annotated on us. (laughs) So, um, Guys, um, I made a slide just for this, just to really hammer home that what matters with anything you do, you know, even life, you know, when you trace success for anything, adherence and consistency and sustainability are the key, right? I've always said it, consistency plus times plus time equals results. So it doesn't matter if you're on the most optimal training program with the best coach in the world, okay? Uh, You still need adherence to get the results, right? So picking up and sticking to a program is step number one. So I really wanted to hammer that home in this first slide. Um, So now we're going to go on to the major driver of hypertrophy on the next slide, which is volume. Okay, so I'm going to take my time and explain this for you guys, because uh, this is really where the meat and potatoes come when it comes to lifting weights. Okay. Okay. so volume is the total amount of work done over a given period of time. All right. Intensity is the load or weight used based off a percentage of your one rep max or off the rate of perceived exertion or RPE, which we're going to get into that as well. Yeah, that's uh, good. The RPE scale. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a good skill to use to uh, like auto regulate your training, you know, especially when you're training not off percentages, because like uh, powerlifters tend to train off percentages of the one rep max. Bodybuilders tend to train more in the RPE slash RIR scale, which that basically means like rate of perceived exertion, right? So um, the RPE scale is there as well, guys, for you to see. Um, so for hypertrophy, you want to be focusing on being an RPE of seven. Now, what an RPE of seven basically means is rate of perceived exertion of seven, which basically means you have around three reps left in, in reserve. Like if someone put a gun in your head and had you lifting a weight and you, and you really push yourself and you had three reps left in the tank, that's about where you want to be to stimulate hypertrophy. Okay. You want to be, uh, at, 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 at like, uh, at minimum, you want to be set three reps in reserve. Okay. If you want to go eight or nine, that's okay as well but you want to at least hit that seven RPE threshold. So okay. in other words, so, so what you're saying, because a lot of guys like myself, I used to think, Hey, you work the muscles to failure. That's the, that's the best way to achieve mm. muscle growth. And so what you're suggesting is you don't work your muscles to failure. Make sure you have a few left in the tank. Explain yeah. to my audience why this is important. Great question, Donovan. And I get this literally all the time. Well, aren't I supposed to kill myself? Aren't I supposed to get out the gym feeling like I want to die? And the reality is no, uh, there's a multitude of studies that show that training of failure, the, the problem with training of failure is it destroys your ability to get in volume. Okay. And volume is the major driving force of hypertrophy. Okay. You're better off doing, you know, five sets of 10 at 225, right. Versus going in there and doing one set of 20 and like, you know, gassing yourself. And then basically now that's going to, uh, inhibit your ability to do more reps, uh, more reps during the subsequent sets which means your overall volume comes down. When your overall volume comes down, that negatively impacts your ability to build muscle in the long term. You know what I mean? So that's why training to failure is so is, it's not awful, but it's not optimal. I don't suggest it if, if you wanna train optimally because you wanna be able to go in the gym and train frequently because uh, the studies also show that frequency, which we're gonna get into that as well. Okay. There's a huge uh, assistance when it comes to getting in the required volume. But uh, you definitely don't want you want to be trying to stay away from failure so that you can get an adequate volume. Now, as you come closer to your cycle, which I'll talk about next year, as you get closer to your like your end of your cycle, uh, let's say you're doing four weeks on one week off. Okay. Then on your fourth week, you could start taking things to failure because you got a week uh, of rest coming up or a deload where you're significantly going to lower your training volume so you can actually recover. Then you can start taking stuff to failure because you got a week of recovery. Right. Right. So. That's why during your the main training cycle, you really want to stay away from failure so, so that you don't limit your ability to do more volume overall and get more quality sets in. Um, so that's basically it. But that's a great question, man. I get that all the time. So and then uh, so we were talking about RPE and RIR. And then frequency, guys, is the amount of times a muscle group is trained per week, per month, and per year. Okay. So we're going to go into the next slide okay. on volume. And... Uh, Hypertrophy basically falls into three uh, main categories, guys. Uh, you got minimum effective dose or MED. This is the minimum amount of volume to stimulate hypertrophy, but is minimal and suboptimal. Okay. Okay. And you got maximum adaptive volume, which is this is the sweet spot, right? This is where you want to be to get the most volume you can get, adapt, and actually grow from. Okay. This is like where you want to be when you're training. And then you got your MRV. This is where your high end athletes are training. Your you know your professional bodybuilders, etc. This is, stands for maximum recoverable volume. Uh, this, this, uh, your MRV basically varies from person to person, you know, your training experience, uh, whether you're natural or not genetics, et cetera, these all come into play. Um, and this is what I would call like, uh, close to the red line and flirting with the diminishing result, uh, diminishing returns at this okay. point. So, um, so that basically the, so now that you guys know, uh, what like the different types of volume is, you know, what the sweet spot is now for most people, uh, somewhere between 10 to 10 to 13 sets is like minimum effective dose. And then for most people, somewhere between 10, to, excuse me, about 10 sets per week is like great for beginners, right? Okay. Like for people that don't have much training, training stimulus, but for more intermediate advanced guys, that's going to be your minimum effective dose. You might maintain your muscle mass at that rate, but you, you're not going to really gain anything. 10, 10 to 15, that's where you start to get in the sweet spot, right? That's where you're like, and we're talking about effective sets where you're actually pushing yourself week per week, right? Right. That's where you want it. That's like where you can actually adapt and grow from. That's what you want. Adaptation is your best friend when it comes to go, uh, growing. Then you got your max recoverable volume, which is about 20 sets per week. And that um, that's when you're starting to flirt with the red line and uh, your ability to recover starts to diminish. And, you know, you start getting diminishing returns on your training. So that's where like advanced guys are at. 
Excellent. Uh, Erico 2 uh, yeah, I, Erico 202, I see you in the queue. We're going to get you after the presentation. If you want to hold the line, that's fine. If you want to drop off and then call back at the end of the presentation, we'll certainly get to that. Um, quick comment in the um, uh, in the chat. 5050 uh, Dusty says, obviously going to failing for beginners is an awful idea. You would be right, but this is why we're doing the show. A lot of guys like 5050 Dusty, they have that common sense as far as the gym is concerned. But most guys don't. Most men don't know that training to failure isn't awful, but it isn't optimal. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, we get guys in here who say, okay, well, obviously this is, you know, listen, a lot of this information might appear to be remedial, but that's why this is necessary because a lot of guys don't have even a remedial working knowledge on how to train properly. These are the guys who are in and out of the gyms. They yo-yo diet. They're, they're kind of in shape, but not really in great shape. These are the guys that don't have that. How can I put this? They don't have that refined information like, oh, you're not supposed to train to failure. I never knew that. They put that one thing into place, Myron, and all of a sudden they change their physique. So while some of this information might seem obvious and, and, and remedial for a lot of you guys, um, a, a, what a, a lot of times what we what we do have to end up realizing is that there are some guys who just don't have this kind of knowledge. Yeah, you got to get that back to the basics, man. And, and unfortunately, like in the fitness industry, you know, we, we're kind of like guys that like really enjoy working out. We're kind of masochists, right? So we like yeah. enjoy the pain and we're told, you know, go hard, push hard. You know, you look at the old body, bodybuilding photos, you're watching Arnold train and he's sweating, he's dying, you know. And the reality is guys don't understand is that, you know, this was the 1970s. These guys were on drugs. You know, they could do things that you can't as a natural. And a lot of people see this and like they look up to it and like, oh, I can train like that too and get huge. And it's like, sure, if you're on you that, know, it's just steroids. exactly, you know. <laughs> and like, so a lot of guys like don't have like basic knowledge of of uh, training properly. Like, I, like I said, train to failure will get you results. It absolutely will. You know what I mean? It got me results. I used to train to failure earlier in my training career as well, but. As you become more advanced, as you learn more, you start to realize that training to failure is just, it's a short-term solution to a long-term problem. If you want prolonged success in the weight room, you have to train uh, intelligently and you have to get the required volume in. And failure effectively, you know, the studies show it, like it destroys your ability to recover and get the adequate volume to well, Brian, we're trying to change well, listen we're trying to change our physique and our lifestyle we're not training for con listen if you're training for a contest yeah by all means train to failure but i'm not going to yeah. be in any bodybuilding contest anytime soon and i can't imagine anybody watching is either and not only that but like those guys that are competing a lot of them aren't natural you know let's keep That's it right. real you know exactly. a lot of them aren't natural so they have they have advantages that you don't have they have elite genetics they have a nutrition program that's uh literally dialed into the gram you know these guys don't work a full-time job. These guys train, eat, 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 live, and train, you know, that's all they do. So, you know, they're not, they're, they have way more advantage than you do working an office job, having a family, only having an hour to train at the gym, you know? So don't compare yourself to these guys, you know, do what's best for you. And uh, obviously you want to adapt the most um, optimal training methods to get to your goals, you know? So that's right. why it's not good to follow advice from guys that are like taking drugs or sure. guys that are like, too elite because it's like their advice is a little too advanced you know right right their body composition is different they're on drugs and they're high level athletes and they're 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 different exactly so okay. you, you just gotta you just gotta take everything with a grain of salt and know who you're you know some people put a great information out there that might be enhanced and there are guys that just don't and it's just about being smart like the, the with the abundance of information that we were talking about earlier you know it's way too much stuff out there excellent here we go 202 and 313 we're going to get to you after the presentation we're about halfway through I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take it personally if you want to drop off and then and then jump back on at the end. Uh, if you're fine with just hanging on the line until the end of the presentation, that's perfectly fine. Anybody else who wants to jump in the queue, nine one four two zero five five three five six. Let's continue. Yeah, yeah, and we'll probably answer one of their questions during the presentation as well. That's true. Um. So okay. So we we're now we're on uh, slide eight. Okay. Let's do uh, it. Drivers of okay. So let's talk about what actually goes into um hypertrophy right so you got three main things three primary mechanisms you got mechanical tension this is the amount of actual load you subject your muscles to during resistance training you got metabolic stress this is the buildup of metabolites such as creatine lactate hydrogen ion inorganic phosphate etc in the muscles during exercise where there's a lack of oxygen this results in the pump feeling okay so like when you're when you're like you know doing a bicep curl and your arm swells up that's like metabolic stress from like you know from a high rep set etc uh, you got muscle damage, which is the damage caused to the muscle during resistance training. 
that prompts the uh, process of muscle protein synthesis, which is basically muscle protein synthesis or MPS is basically recovery, right? right. To build a stronger and larger muscle, which is the goal of weight training in the first place. Um, the eccentric portion of the lift and overall volume contribute to this muscular damage. This is why form and controlling the weight is so important, okay? And uh, mechanical tension and muscle damage are responsible for most of hypertrophy, but all three are the primary drivers and work in conjunction with each other with each other to signal for a hypertrophic response. Huh, nice. So now we're going to go into the next one, which is progression. Ah, this is where this is this this is uh, this is my kind of slide right here, man. I love this stuff. Yeah, I wanted to really illustrate it for you guys um, because it's one thing to talk, but like pictures say, uh, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. All right. So. So the next thing on the pyramid that we're going to talk about, guys, is progression, okay? Uh, progressive overload is the gradual increase of stress placed upon the body during exercise training, okay? Improved training performance over time accomplishes progressive overload. Examples include increasing the weight, increasing reps, decreasing rest time, uh, performing movements with better form, increasing sets, increasing tempo, you know, being able to better control the weight, et cetera. And as long as you're progressing, guys, from – Week to week or month to month, you know, as obviously as you get more and more advanced, your progress slows a little bit more and you have to have, you know, higher set points as far as like seeing progress. Right. As long as you're progressing over time, you're doing something right, you know, because uh, you can because typically if you're progressing, you're probably going to grow to some extent. Right. OK, so um, that's progressive overload in a nutshell, guys. Um, next is exercise selection. OK. OK, which was next on the pyramid, as if you guys recall. Um, exercise selection is very important. Compound movements or movements that work multiple muscle groups should be prioritized in your training. Okay. Um, examples of compounds include for legs, you know, so your squat for quads, uh, hamstrings, deadlift, back, horizontal pulls such as rows, vertical pulls such as pull-ups or lat pull-downs, um, chest, a horizontal press, like a bench press, whether it be dumbbell or barbell. And then for shoulders, a vertical press of some kind, overhead press or dumbbell press. And I just kind of want to uh, say on this one, you know, I know for a lot of guys out there, oh, yeah, compound movements is, is you know, the way to go. But you'd be surprised at how many people are in the gym and they're like, you know, emphasizing doing bicep curls or calf well, raises see, I or, used you know, shrugs. I used to be one of those guys, Mr. Strong lifts five by five, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, and the important thing, guys, is you always want to base your workouts around compound movements. Accessory movements are great, doing your bicep curls, your tricep kickbacks, et cetera. But save that to the end, man. Focus on the compound movements that are hitting most, multiple muscle groups. That's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Really load those exercises. Then go and hit the bicep curls in the shoulders. Unless, like, you're, like, advanced and that's, like, a weak point for you and you're trying to bring it up. But, like, for beginners, focus on compound movements. That's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Good. That's so uh, next is rest periods. Um, so, and this was next on the, on the pyramid as well for you guys. So rest periods, uh, tend to assist in allowing athletes to get more volume, right? So longer rest periods, uh, allow, allow you to get more volume. Um, there are studies that show rest periods can negatively, short rest periods can uh, negatively impact muscle growth potential, ensure adequate recovery to maximize set quality, which is load used per set, thus maximizing potential volume, but do not focus and drop training intensity. OK, so the takeaway here, guys, is somewhere between, I would say, two to five minutes, anywhere in that range is a sweet spot that you want to be in if uh, you want to maximize your set quality, i.e., you know, uh, pushing out the most reps that you can um, while staying away from failure, but working with the heaviest loads you can at the same time. Now, do short rest periods have their place? They definitely do. I like using them for beginners, guys that are newer to training, because it keeps things honest. Right. right. Um, but with that said. You know, it, it, it builds a great foundation. Then from there, then you can build your foundation and keep moving up where you're taking longer rest periods and pushing heavier loads. Excellent. So that's rest periods. That's good information, man. Not a lot of guys, not a lot of guys realize that a lot of guys don't rest enough between sets because they're also trying to get the cardiovascular effect. But lifting weights, even longer rest periods, lifting weights is cardiovascular activity. Am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, to some extent, um, you know, when you're lifting weights, you are, you, you know, you're going to get cardiovascular effects from lifting weights regardless. I mean, you get cardiovascular effects, uh, benefits just from like walking briskly, you know. So sure. if you're lifting right. weights, you're definitely going to get some great um, aerobic training as well. But, you know, guys like to take short rest, which is okay. You know, some guys like to chase the pump and stuff like that. You're still going to make gains. But remember, as long as you remember that like volume is like the overall like major driving factor when it comes to hypertrophy, uh -huh. then 
that will allow you to make more intelligent decisions when it comes to resting. Now, when it comes to beginners, though, you're going to basically grow off anything. So for beginners, it's good to teach them that discipline from the beginning. Hey, timed rest periods, you know, so that you can accurately gauge progress week to week. Because if you're resting the same all the time, you're keeping all the controls constant, then you'll be able to see progress week to week as, oh, I only rested a minute, but I lifted heavier weights. Well, you can objectively say now that you got stronger, right? And that gains yeah. are probably going to come not far behind, assuming your lifestyle is in check with sleep, nutrition, et cetera, which we'll give you guys a presentation on that too in the future. Uh, <laughs> next is rep ranges or no, excuse me, time under tension. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is an overrated concept. I remember about uh, like in the earlier 2010s, 2011, 2012, Tut was like the main thing in the fitness industry, you know, time under tension, this is how you grow. And, you know, obviously, as always, the science comes out and, you know, it disproved it. And I was a fan of Tut too. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, no, I, I knew better. No, no, no. I was doing it too. But um, as always, you should always adapt with the times, you know, look at the research and, and learn. You know, people, you got to have an open mind and be open to uh, changing your views if it's disproven as less optimal. That's the truth, you know. So time under tension, guys, to sum it up for you, it's an overrated concept. The eccentric portion or lowering of the weight, right? That's eccentric. The concentric is the, the lifting. Uh, should be controlled, but not deliberately slowed down for more time under tension, okay? Okay. Too much tut impact impacts, too much TUT negatively impacts training loads. For example, you can't lift as heavy with a four second eccentric, which by nature is gonna decrease your overall total volume, right? And you're, when you decrease volume, we already know that decreases your, you know, potential for growth. So touch shouldn't be prioritized too, too much because, you know, it could definitely negatively impact loads, which negatively impacts volume. Um, now, with that said, touch could be a good option for newer lifters that need to learn form, uh, injured athletes that, can, that can't really work with heavier loads right. um, or need to lighten loads. And it's a variable that you can definitely use sparingly. You know, it's another tool in the toolbox, you know, to use. Right. It's not... You know, it's not stupid to use, but, you know, you just got to know when to use it. And injury, being injured is like a great time to use it or like knowing like, oh, I can't lift heavy weights or you're coming off an injury. You got to keep the weights light. Then, yeah, tut is a great tool to use. Excellent. Excellent. So let's talk on the next slide about rep ranges. So I get this all the time. And this is the bonus. This cut wasn't on the uh, it wasn't on the um, pyramid, but I felt that this was really important because there's a lot of misconceptions about rep ranges. Uh, and I kind of want to distill this for you. OK, so. Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, uh, this guy is the real deal when it comes to anything hypertrophy based in the science community. Uh, I cited his book in the in the reference and the description box. Um, great book. It's I actually have it right next to me here. And it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I always reference this book, um, but to give you guys a summary here with reps. Um, basically, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld did two studies, one in 2014 and 2015, okay? And the 2014 study basically took and split 17 young and trained men that performed three sets of 10 repetitions with 90 seconds rest and a group did seven sets of three rep max with a three minute interval. Okay? okay. And after eight weeks, so one group basically did higher reps versus with a shorter rest versus another group did uh, seven sets with uh, a, a much higher weight, right? Three, only three reps. After eight weeks, there was no significant difference in hypertrophy. Okay. Now the 2015 study, took 18 trained young men and they split them into two groups. One group of guys did eight to 12 reps, right? Your typical traditional bodybuilding ranges. And the other group did 25 to 35 reps. Okay. okay. And uh, obviously volume was equated in both these studies, the 2014, 2015 study. And once again, they show that there was no significant difference Dude. in tissue thickness and hypertrophy. So what does that mean guys? That basically means that anywhere between six to like 35 reps, right? Maybe even more, or maybe even less, you know, upward downward variance in that range is gonna build muscle. So what matters? Volume and practicality and training at the correct intensity, which we're talking about earlier of RPE and RIR, right? Using RPE and RIR in conjunction. And RPE is again, rate of perceived exertion and RIR is reps in reserve. So again, like seven RPE means three reps in reserve. Okay, good stuff. So um, basically the conclusion of this, if Intensity is applied correctly. Anywhere from six to 35 reps can yield similar hypertrophic uh, results, okay? Lower reps obviously increase overall strength and hypertrophy, but is not required if hypertrophy is the sole primary focus. Um, I also want to add that uh, in the powerlifting groups, right, the groups that lifted heavier weights in these studies, they were noticeably more fatigued um, at, at the end. And obviously, some guys actually had to leave the study because of injuries. So, oh, wow. 
Yeah. So, so that's why like lifting super heavy might be not, might not be conducive to long-term, you know, longevity in the weight room. So for practicality reasons, guys, I suggest anywhere from six to 15 reps. That way you're lifting at a heavy enough load so that you can actually assess proper, um, fatigue right because if you're lifting six reps well you'll know it like rep three like oh i only got three to go you know yeah right and then, right you're right <laughs> versus like you're doing like 35 reps and you're going to get gas beforehand uh, aerobically before you can even actually like get the correct you know rate of perceived exertion because your aerobic uh your aerobic capacity gives out before your muscular capacity can right right so um so six to 15 guys i would say the sweet spot for practicality reasons so but these studies really open everyone's eyes as to they're based on a multitude of rep ranges work. Excellent. So next we're going to talk about application and takeaways, guys, which, um, you know, hopefully you guys can take this and take some things from this presentation and learn from. So basically, number one, pick a workout plan that works best for you that you enjoy. OK, this is the maximum. This is to maximize the most important factor, which is adherence. OK, choose a training plan that will get you the appropriate volume. Ten to 20 sets per body part is appropriate for most people. Um, train at the correct intensity. This range is uh, from approximately 60 to 85 percent of your one rep max, or above an RPE of seven, like which we discussed is somewhere between uh, RPE seven to ten, which is RPE three in reserve or zero in reserve. If you're RPE ten, you literally have nothing in reserve, and you couldn't have done more weight or more reps. Uh, and then make sure your performance uh, and total volume in the gym increases over time. Use frequency as a tool to achieve more volume, <coughs> excuse me, more quality volume over a week to train at the appropriate intensities. Prioritize compound movements and exercise selection. Three minutes seems to be the, a good starting point for rest in between sets for compounds and about one and a half to two minutes for isolations. You know, your bicep curls, your tricep extensions, right. et cetera. But on your squats, take about three to five minutes. Um, tempo is not as important as people used to think, uh, but can definitely be a great tool to use to change training variables around and spice things up or if coming off an injury or working with a beginner or if you are a beginner and you want to improve your form. Um, and then work in all rep ranges, guys. Uh, okay. But six to 15 seems to be uh, the best of both worlds for practicality reasons. Excellent. So, Excellent. yeah, man. And then uh, the next slide, I think. And then the wrong one there. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then, yeah, that's the end, guys. This, this is great. That's the end. I thought I had one more, but no, that's it. Okay, yeah. And by the way, all of the studies, all of the links, all of the research, all of the links are in the description. So if you guys want to read up on the stuff that, that uh, Myron's been talking about here. You guys can you guys can be sure to find that uh, in the description. All of that information is is 100% in the description. Uh, if you guys had any questions about that, uh, we are going to go ahead and take phone calls now. Area code 202 and 313. If you guys want to call back in, we'll we'll go ahead and get to your questions as soon as possible. I uh, got a question here from David Free. Uh, he wants to know what your opinion is on intermittent fasting. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so. Um, here's the thing, uh, as we discussed, a good question, good question. I get this all the time, intermittent fasting, keto, paleo, et cetera. Right. Um, so me and Donovan have discussed this many times, but I'll bring, bring you guys up to speed on our discussions when we talk about diets and all that other stuff. So the reality is when it comes to diets, guys, the most important thing is adherence. You know, if intermittent fasting helps you stick to your diet, right? Your caloric deficit, I'm assuming you're intermittent fasting to put yours to lose body fat, which typically means you're going to be in a calorie deficit, right? If, if you can adhere to it, great. You know what I mean? But I want to make one thing very clear. There's no superior diet, whether it be keto, flexible dieting, um, paleo, et cetera. There's no superior diet. If, because the studies show, when if you equate protein, total calories, and fiber, there's virtually no difference in fat loss among the different diets. So what matters is adherence and enjoyment. So if intermittent fasting helps you hit your calorie goals because you, you know, you're eating off of a clock, excellent. You know, if it works for you, do it, you know, but it doesn't have any type of superior benefits compared to a basic calorie restriction. Excellent. Very good answer, man. Excellent answer. Um, there are actually a couple of other questions. Again, guys, if you guys have any questions, 914-205-5356. Let me hide this. There we go. That is the number to call if you guys want to get in on the discussion. If you guys want to, if you guys have any questions, uh, for Myron, um, Sharp Assist actually had a very good question a little bit earlier, and this is actually a question that I wanted to ask you. So I watched a, I watched part of a documentary. Um, Ooh, here called, we go, Netflix. Yeah, called Game. Changer. I already know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, you know it's it's interesting. I thought originally I didn't realize that 
I, I didn't realize what it was at first. And what it is, it's this, it was this MMA fighter who trains, who trains military personnel for combat and very effective fighter, et cetera, et cetera. Well, he got injured. He, he tore, tore up, tore up both of his knees and he started doing research on the things that he can do to increase recovery. And what he found out is that there are a lot of elite athletes that are on plant based diets. Now, the first guy he talked about was this skinny little marathon runner. He's a marathon runner. He's like, yeah, you know, I, you know, run marathons. I'm on a plant based diet. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not buying it. I'm like, okay, this is, this is, this is, this is vegetarian propaganda. Then the next athlete was a woman who was an Olympic track cycler. And she's like, yeah, you know, ever since I changed, my, uh, you know, uh, I stopped eating meat like five, six years ago, blah, 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 blah. And, and again, she's a woman. Then they cut it to a heavyweight boxer who happens to be from Philadelphia. This guy is a heavyweight boxer and he's ripped. Then they talk to a guy who's an Olympic weightlifter, heavyweight weightlifter. Then they talk to a guy who is a strong man. These guys are all on plant-based diets. There is one guy on the Tennessee Titans. I forget. I, I can't believe I don't remember his name. Linebacker in the NFL. There's another wide receiver in the NFL on plant-based diets. So my question is, is just like sharp assists. What is, is there anything to the plant-based diets or is this all just bunk? Um, I actually did the vegan diet for a few months. What? Um, I, I did So I can speak from experience and I will say, and I did it as an experiment guys. So like for, to see health reasons, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, uh, Aaron, Gra uh, Aaron, Gra uh, Grahita says Nate Diaz is vegan. Yes. Nate Diaz was in the, he was also in that documentary and in that video, I mean, uh, in that documentary, he talks about his fight with Conor McGregor and obviously he beat McGregor the first time. And mm -hmm. McGregor at the press conference, yeah, just came down to energy. So I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted no, to. No, 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 no. That's a good point. Um, so the thing is, so I did the vegan diet for a few months, actually, uh, about a year ago. And I did it as an experiment to see, you know, how my vitality would be, how my performance in the gym would be, et cetera. And what I could say is that I definitely did lose some, some, some muscle mass. But that was because, for me, I just didn't eat enough protein. And that, that, that's on me. I should have. You know, I just couldn't take all the beans. I just <laughs> got to be honest here, right? Sure. Um, but I did feel great um, from a vitality standpoint. I did feel good. Um, now, and I just, and I didn't really do it for ethical reasons. I know I respect a lot of guys do it for ethical reasons with animals. But uh, for me, I did it just to see my health and my, I did feel better, but I did, yeah. I lost tissue and it was hard to sustain. I got again with diets. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I got to tell you, I'm giving it some serious thought and I don't give a shit about the ethics about it. I love animals. They're delicious and they're also cute pets. That's just <laughs> about, listen, it, it's the circle of life. I don't care. About, no, I don't care about that. The only reason why I'm thinking about going onto a plant-based diet is because on my TV, I saw an NFL linebacker, a heavyweight fighter, and an Olympic power lifter talking about, and Nate Diaz talking about, I don't eat meat. I'm on a plant-based diet. And look at these guys. These guys are top level athletes. So that's why I wanted to get your opinion on it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's not going to hurt you. Um, the, the only the hardest thing being on a vegan diet is that it, it's hard to get protein, right? Because obviously, animal proteins are like, the, you know, are, have the highest leucine content. They're just, it's just easier, more practical to get it from animals, right? Eating meat. But you can still build a great physique on a vegan diet. It's just that you're going to have to be a little bit more cognizant about your protein intake. And you're going to have to take a little bit more. Uh, that, you know, I would say like if you're taking in one gram per pound of body weight of protein, uh, I would say on a vegan diet, you know, just to be careful, I would take 1.25 to 1.5 okay. just to, so that you can ensure and getting it from different sources of plant-based proteins to ensure you're getting, you know, the leucine to kickstart that muscle protein synthesis. But, you know, if you can do that, you know, and you can tolerate beans, hey, man, go for it. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. And the good thing about vegan diets is typically you're eating more micronutrient-dense foods just by nature of being on a diet. Mm -hmm. So when you're eating micronutrient-dense foods, you just feel better and like your body operates better. That's why I'm such a big proponent of drinking water and eating spinach and kale. Like I'm like real big on eating vegetables like every day, you know, or I so, hear about this, the more, listen, I, the, the, the main thing that you said was I felt better. You said I feel better vitality wise. I'm 42 years old. I'm not getting any younger. And the older I get, the more important sleep, sleep becomes dude. I got six hours of sleep the other night. I felt like shit. Like okay, <laughs> yeah. 22, Listen, when I was 22, I used to be able to be just fine on three and a half hours of sleep, right? And you're training hard at the gym too. That's you're what busting I'm your ass in the gym, like you're doing like. Diamond's going to gym, guys, right now. Oh, dude, 
That's that. That's how. I'm, yes, I am building gym, and I'm not talking about the little cable stuff. No, I'm talking squat racks. Um, uh, I'm talking a, a, a squat rack, Olympic barbells, uh, real fucking plate. Like, dude, uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually moving, and we're getting a townhouse with a garage, and that thing is gonna be. That's gonna be the TSR gym. That thing is gonna be fucking unbelievably awesome. I'm actually gonna do podcasts from there. When we do these podcasts, I'm going to do it from there, just so I can look like. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the more I hear about this stuff, the more I hear about this plant-based diet, the more I want to give it a try. Like I said, not for the animals. Give it a shot, stuff. man. Give it a shot. I mean, like my thing is always when it comes to any diet, it's adherence and preference, right? So <laughs> if it, you know, that's the number one thing when it comes to diet guys, nothing is superior, but try it out. If you like it, you know, just make sure you're hitting your calorie number and your macronutrient requirements and you're good, man. Really? That's, that's really what matters. Energy balance is like the biggest dictator when it comes to weight yeah. loss and weight gain. So if you want to do it on a vegan diet, whether it be paleo, vegan, keto, et cetera, you know, there's many ways to skin a cat. It's about sustainability, adherence, and preference. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and bring uh, Erico 313 on the line. We see some other questions in the chat, uh, but uh, we'll get to those in a second. Erico 313 are on live with Donovan and Myron Gaines. Go ahead. Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing good. All right. I had a question. I, I started lifting weights with a buddy of mine who uh, was lifting, and I kind of wanted to make sure that I understood you correctly when you were saying that it's not about like, um, well, it's about the reps you the reps you get. So you want to do like a lot of different sets. So you said it's between 15 and 20 sets of uh, lifting. And is that between like uh, each set? Hope I'm um, sorry. Uh, is so is your question saying now remember sets we're not talking per day that's per week so when we're talking about max yeah, recoverable yeah. volume maximum adaptive volume etc and that comes from dr mike israel shout out to him uh that that scale um you want to be doing that per week so like for chest right you know you know you don't want to be doing you want to you want to be and remember 10 20 sets is like on the higher end right that's like for advanced guys i would say like beginners 10 to 13 more advanced guys you know, 13 to 15, 16, around there. And then, you know, as you get more and more advanced, you can get closer and closer to 20 or even exceed 20 if you're like an elite guy, right, in the gym. But um, but that's per week. So that's not per actual training day. That's that's per week. Okay. And are you are you big on uh, like the bro splits or whatever or like doing chest one day? Uh, good that, question. Are you doing like that or are you – Excellent question. Me and Donovan were actually talking about this at the 21 con. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, okay. Do bro splits work? They absolutely do. And guys, uh, for the viewers out there, a bro split is basically like, you know, chest Monday, you know, shoulders Tuesday, oh, yeah. Monday, back national Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Monday's match, you know, and then obviously never legs, right? Never legs. Right. So then it goes back right back to chest on Thursday. So, um, so that's a bro split. Um, there's nothing wrong with bro splits. You can grow on a bro split, right? I did bro splits for like years, but it's not optimal. And the reason why is that when you do bro splits, it affects your ability to get in quality volume, right? So let's say you go in there and you do chest on Monday, right? You walk in there and you're like, yeah, it's time to bench. And you do your flat bench and then you do your incline bench and you do your decline bench. Well, there's no way that everything, if you took those, if you did five or six quality sets on the flat, flat bench press, that you're going to be able to put five or six quality sets on the incline and then five or sets quality sets, uh, five or six quality sets on the decline, right? You're better off breaking that up. So, you know, one day you come in and you hit chest, you do, you know, flat bench. Then another day, two days later, you come in and you do, you know, incline bench. You're better off doing that because then the, 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 the quality of the sets goes up. So I'm a big fan of frequency, you know, whether it be three full body workouts a week or upper lower rest, upper lower, or um, a push pull leg split. These and the studies show that frequency uh, training two times per week is superior in almost every way to training only one time per week. Right. So frequency is your friend when it comes to getting in uh, volume and quality sets. Good question, man. Okay, awesome. Hey, Donovan, definitely check out the uh, the vegan or the plant based diet, man. I gave it a shot, um, and I was super tired because I do jujitsu and stuff like that. Yeah, so I was right. Super tired for like the first like five to seven days okay but after that man i had great energy everything was everything is good clean energy you know i was taking you know twos on the regular you know what i'm saying everything was moving right and i'm still i'm still a, like a vegetarian or vegan now and um um 
Yeah, I've been doing it for like eight months, man. So I'm, I'm going to keep it going. And yeah. I don't plan on ever going back to eat regular meat again. That's a personal preference, especially with all man. GMOs and everything like that. I've heard enough. Dude, the I've heard enough. I'm I'm listen, gonna... everybody, <laughs> everyone in the chat who's on this plant-based diet is telling me the same thing. They're like, I've never felt better. I have more energy. Dude, I've, I'm giving it a try. I'm giving it a yeah, try. Give it a shot, man. Give it a shot. I've I've, I've heard enough. Uh, thanks the for the uh, thanks hey, for that the info. Three one three. Yeah, no problem. All right, good questions. Three one three. Yeah, nine one four two zero five five three five six. Let's go to area code five seven one. Area code five seven one. You're on live. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, hey. Uh, I wanted to find out about uh, like sets or, or reps. Yeah, like for the different exercises. So I guess for like, okay. the, if you have your squat and your bench presses, like what are good, uh, good numbers for like sets? Uh, when you say numbers, are you like referring to like load, like how much you're lifting? Yeah, I guess the, the load, but then also like, like sets and, and reps for the different exercises. I guess the, the different, uh, I, I'm thinking like you don't want to be doing the same number of, uh, sets and reps for like benches as you're doing for like squats. And that's okay. I think I understand what you mean. So you're basically saying like, you know, what's a good rep range for squats versus a good rep range for bench presses. Is that, I think that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, that's a good question because obviously doing, you know, 20 rep sets on squats is, is a nightmare. I used to do that as well. And that's not fun. <laughs> you know, talk about wanting to pass out. It, that's the worst. Um, I would say, um, for squats, the crazy thing though is like, so genetics play a big role here, right? So like some people respond really well to high reps. So like I noticed that like my legs grew when I did high rep squats, even though I hated it, it, it worked, you know? And for a lot of people, high reps on legs tend to work. Um, but that's where experimentation kind of comes in for you. Now, if you're a beginner, right? And I define, and let me define a beginner for you guys. A beginner is basically anyone who's been training for a year or less, maybe a year and a half, two years. It's at, maybe at the higher end, right? they're really inconsistent someone that's been training for like less than two years and they haven't been going to the gym like consistently at least three to four times a week right and training with weights on some kind of regimented program then i would consider you a beginner right which is good that's not an insult guys because the reality is if you're a beginner and your body hasn't been exposed to like proper resistance training your body is literally primed to grow right like the, the stimulus is going to be so strong even with like less optimal training you're going to derive some kind of benefit for in hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. So if you're a beginner, then rep ranges aren't that important for you. You know, you need to just focus in there and go in, uh, focus, go in there and like work on good form, uh, you know, lifting, uh, getting better week by week and staying in that six to 15 rep range. And you're going to grow just off that, you know, but if you're a more advanced guy, then yes, you need to start like gauging progress, figuring out what works for you, what doesn't, but those are more advanced techniques. Does that make sense? Right, yeah. Thanks. Appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. That no does. worries, brother. Yeah. Right, and I good am, question. Uh, Thanks for the call. Oh, I, I think I cut him off a little early. If, if you had another question, call back. Area code 571 didn't mean to cut you off there. Uh, let's go back to the phone lines. Uh, area code 469. You're on live. Go ahead. Hey, how you gentlemen doing? Doing good, man. What's up, brother? Oh, I, I forgot to start the conversation. My man, Donovan, OC of the year of the Manosphere. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon. You got it, my man. <laughs> Good stuff, man. How you doing? Hey, man, I can't wait to see you do the show from a gym. That oh. is going to be pure prime manosphere power. Yes, I'm sir. just saying. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to have that thing then, built. Honestly, man, I'm going to have that thing built within a month. Within a month, I'm going to have that thing built. Geez. I'm actually I'm moving a week from Sunday, number one. Number yes, two, sir. I'm building yeah. a brand new studio. That's going to be up and running. So I'm building a new studio. It's going to fucking blow you guys away. Then I'm going to build a gym in my basement. And it's not going to be a gym with a bunch of cable pulleys, little pink. No, 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 no. Like I said before, squat right. rack is going to be Olympic. It's going to be Olympic barbells, Olympic weights. I'm gonna have the I'm gonna have the floor mats. I'm gonna have the TV screen there. It, it, the shit's gonna be it's gonna be fucking it's gonna be as legit as MC Hammer. Christmas time is going to be nice in the manosphere. Now, if I can get you, if I can get you not to like the Eagles, I'd love you for life. <laughs> you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be disappointed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman you got on the right now discussing weights and stuff, 
thank you, brother, for what you are telling people, and thank you for including the plant-based lifestyle. Because so many people, men, get to the meat, 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 and I'm glad that you're in court, that men yeah. long and perform at a prime level. Donovan, you're at it again. Man, you're I'm trying new stuff. I can't. Listen, like I, I, I said. It. I'm not a I'm not a closed-minded individual, right? If if I see information that flies in the face of what I believe, I'll take a look at it, and my right. mind can be changed, but uh -huh. it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to have somebody come on my show and give me some weak, parroted information. No, I it, it takes a lot for my mind to be changed. But within the last what 72 hours between that half documentary and what I'm hearing and seeing in the chat, I'm in. I'm going to try it. Yeah. Man. I'm going to try it. Hey. All I can say is I, uh, I lift just one time a week, three times a week. I do jiu-jitsu. One time I do boxing. Right. I'm, an, I'm an older gentleman. I'm not small as by my name, Big Brandon. I'm not small. I'm 6'4", <laughs> 350. All right. So if that's small to y'all, let me know. <laughs> no, you're good, so, dude. But yeah, so and, and I incorporate, you know, the plant-based lifestyle and it helps. It helps with recovery. It helps with a lot of stuff. That gentleman that's on the car, that's right there with you, he's he's on his shit. Sorry right. for cussing, but thank you, brother. No, appreciate it, brother. Appreciate. It. You got to keep an open mind, you know. Just because I don't do a vegan diet doesn't mean that it doesn't, you know, work for others, you know. Right. It's all about keeping an open mind. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm dude, looking at the research. I'm. I am. I am one hundred percent convinced. I am absolutely going to try it, and I'm a green juice guy anyway. Um. Be, and and like a lot of guys don't like to drink green juice because they think it tastes funny. It doesn't taste terrible. I mean, it doesn't taste good, but it doesn't but it doesn't take uh, taste terrible either. Um, we got a twenty, I guess, Canadian dollar super chat from Sid seventeen. Uh, he says, I'm "Coming off of a shoulder knee injury from a couple of years ago, thinking strictly solely to body weight and calisthenics for one year. What are your thoughts on calisthenics for maintaining joint health?" He's thirty years old. He's five foot six, hundred seventy five pounds. Well, number one, I would say definitely go see, you know, a medical professional, make sure that you're good, right? Because like anytime you don't want any like built-in inflammation or health effects, you know, to limit your overall progress, right? Because we're in the gym to train long-term, be healthy, feel better, look good, feel good, right? So once you figure out, you know, you're okay, then calisthenics, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you, calisthenics are a great way to train. Um, if you want to optimize hypertrophy and get as big as possible, it's not the most optimal way to train, but can you make excellent gains with only body weight training? Absolutely. Doing pull-ups and dips. Like, I mean, these are challenging movements, right. um, yes. but you know, but you can absolutely build a great physique doing only calisthenics. It might take a little bit longer. You're going to have to be a little bit more creative in your training, uh, you know, frequency and training planning, but you can absolutely get some great results from it. Excellent. Very good question. Um, there was another question uh, that someone asked you. Did you lose strength gains when you were on the vegan diet? Yes, I did. I'm not going to lie. I did. Um, now, with that said, I'm going to I'm going to say also that I definitely was not taking in enough protein. You know, obviously, with all the new literature, I wasn't as educated back then as I am now as, okay. as far as like nutrition and protein intake. So. Um, there's a multitude of studies out there and we'll do this for you guys in another presentation about nutrition. Um, but to sum it up for you guys, uh, you need to eat more protein than you think you do when it comes to like optimizing body composition. Right? So there was, uh, for me, I've pretty much calculated that I need somewhere between 250 to 280 grams, 280 grams of protein per day, which is oh. a lot. And that's really hard to get with, um, on a vegan diet. Right? So I wasn't getting enough. And obviously that led to, you know, strength losses. I wasn't eating enough in general. So I would blame other facets of my lifestyle uh, to the strength loss versus solely basing it on the diet had I ate properly and tracked my calories and everything. So I don't want to make excuses and say, no, the vegan diet messed up. No, no. That was me not planning correctly. So Excellent. Excellent. Trevor Never is back in the house. I haven't seen him in the chat in a while. He says, Donovan, check your ancestry and get a proper tracking of your genetic history. He says, some areas and, and, and nations thrive better on plant-based diets than others. Try 23andMe. You know, interestingly enough, uh, 23andMe, while very fascinating, there was also another element of 23andMe. Had a lot of dudes finding out that a lot of their kids weren't really their kids. <laughs> <laughs> if I can take it, in, if, I, if I can take it in sort of a in, in sort of a red pill uh, uh, from a red pill perspective, um, 
Drink plenty of water to help flush the body. You Every time you get a second, you're drinking water. How much oh, yeah, water yeah. should a man drink? Now, you told me drink until your piss is clear. So how much water should a man drink to optimize body comp competition, composition? That's a, that's a great question, man. Um, so water is critical, guys. Like literally, if you're dehydrated, just and we're going to talk about this in, in the nutrition uh, one. We got some great stuff lined up for you guys coming up. But if you're just you're, if you're dehydrated, just a percentage, your performance in a gym is going to deteriorate, like significantly decrease. So water is that important. I would suggest to opt to make sure that you're never dehydrated. You should be um, urinating clear almost the entire day. And that way, you know, like by there's no way that you're dehydrated. Right. Just to optimize things. Um, but, yeah, water is just that important. I always carry it with me. I'm always like making sure I'm urinating. Uh, pretty clear. I always got a gallon of water with me in the gym. Um, you definitely want to be hydrated around training times, you know, definitely before you go to the gym, if you're pissing yellow and you're about to go to the gym, you're fucking up. I hate to say it like that, but that's, that's the reality, you know, so it's that important guys, water intake. Excellent. Uh, Ralph E wants to know, he's the same guy who asked you if, uh, if you had any strength loss on the vegan diet, he asked you, would you ever try the vegan diet again? Uh, man, it was. I, I felt good. I might it was, answer that for you. When I yeah, was yeah. nine, when I was twenty nine, this was before I got fat and out of shape. When I was married, I would have said no. But at forty two, yeah. So maybe younger guys wouldn't try a vegan diet, and that's fine. I'm not. I'm not Mister Vegan. Da, 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 da. It, I'm not going to call it vegan. I'm just going to call it a plant based diet because I want to. I want to. I, I want to keep a little bit of masculinity. Well, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a vegan. Like you can't say I'm a vegan, and of course I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm talking tongue in cheek. But would you ever try a plant based diet again at the age of 29? Man. I mean, you're at this point. Safe. No, yeah, at this point, no. Okay. Um, just because it was it was very difficult to sustain, and then like just knowing my knowledge now of like how much protein I need and like how important adherence is, like I just I just wouldn't do it because it would just make things so. Uh, it'd be it'd be harder for me to like sustain it. You know what I mean? So that that's me personally, though. You know, I mean, I don't knock anybody that does it. You know, I think it's a great diet to do. I think like for all, for like has a like a, an array of health benefits. Mm -hmm. But personally, it just would be it wouldn't be conducive to my goals. It like it would detract just because sustainability would be so hard to hit. You know, and excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. Well, looks like the questions have slowed up. We don't have anybody else uh, here in the chat. Uh, or we don't have any other questions uh, of note in the chat. So we're going to go ahead and end this. This was an excellent, excellent show. Um, I think we learned a lot about um, about muscle building, muscle gains. Of course, we also talked about the plant based diets. I know a lot of uh, some guys in the chat are saying, "Hey, Donovan, you know, start the plant based diet and give us an update." I will absolutely, positively be doing that. Um, I'm not going to start it until I move into my new place. Uh, Devin and I were getting a new townhouse. It's it's going to be un it's going to be fucking magical. Um, it's right down the street from where we live, so we'll still be in the same area here in Philly. But um, but yeah, when I get all settled in, I, you know what? I'm actually going to do the plant based diet. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it after Thanksgiving because there's no way I'm giving up meat on Thanksgiving. Uh, <laughs> any parting shots here before we uh, close out the show, man? Um, yeah, for any guys that are interested in coaching, need help with the you know evidence based um, training, nutrition assistance. Uh, hit me up on Instagram at Unplugged Fit. Uh, my website's unpluggedfitnesslife.com. And yeah, man, I post a lot of informative stuff on there as far as like putting articles on, you know, how much protein you need, supplements that are worth it, et cetera. Um, yeah, just a lot of informative content, uh, content out there with studies to back it up. So just getting the truth out there to you guys, man. Thank you for having me, Donovan. One last one last quick question here. This guy actually posted yeah. an earlier and I, and, and I skipped over it. Um, Joe Blass wants to know, how do you feel about training a body part twice in a day? That's a very interesting question. Ooh, twice in a day. Um, I personally wouldn't do it. Um, I, I, I've, I've seen like a bunch of training plans where like you go in, you lift the heavy, you lift, the, you lift that body part heavy, then you come in and, you know, you, you lift the same body part again with like higher repetitions. You know, I remember Greg Plitt was a big fan of that RIP. Um, but me personally, I wouldn't do that. I would, I would just, you know, train the body part. Give it about 48 hours or so, and then come back in and hit that same muscle group again. Get that frequency in to help get that overall volume, and obviously, which is a huge driver for hypertrophy. 
Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Well, Myron, listen, man. Excellent, excellent episode. Donovan, thanks for having me, man. Oh, oh dude, of course, man. You're you're welcome on the show anytime. Um, we are going to um, uh, we're, we're definitely going to uh, increase the frequency uh, of these shows. Um, looks like we've got a wannabe troll. He wants to know what I ever take a woman back. Fuck no. Come on. <laughs> listen, listen, I got I gotta take a I got I gotta take a I gotta take a jab at a troll uh, at least one. Uh, there was another guy in here who was meathead, red pill guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. This is the, the internet. Internet isn't real if there's not trolls, man. Yeah, hey, got to be trolls. Listen, if, if, if the <laughs> trolls are not doing it right, so uh, again, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this has been TSR Live uh, Special Fitness Edition. Uh, my thanks to my guest Myron Gaines, and we will see you guys on the flip side. Peace out.